Chapter 30 Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel and his princes, and all the assembly in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient numbers, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. The thing was right in the eyes of the king and of all the assembly. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not kept it in great numbers, in such sort as it is written. So the post went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, You, children of Israel, turn again to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may return to the remnant that has escaped of you out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. Don't be like your fathers and like your brothers, who trespassed against the Lord, the God of their fathers, so that he gave them up to desolation, as you see. Now don't you be stiff-necked, as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For if you turn again to the Lord, your brothers and your children shall find compassion before those who led them captive, and shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if you return to him. So the post passed from city to city, through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even to Zebulun, but they ridiculed them and mocked them. Nevertheless, certain men of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also on Judah came the hand of God to give them one heart, to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. There assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great assembly. They arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense they took away, and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the second month, and the priest and the Levites were ashamed, and sanctified themselves, and brought burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. They stood in their place after their order, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the assembly who had not sanctified themselves. Therefore the Levites had the charge of killing the Passovers for everyone who was not clean to sanctify them to the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulon, had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it is written. For Hezekiah had prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon everyone who sets his heart to seek God, the Lord, the God of his fathers, though not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. The Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. The children of Israel who were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness, and the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments to the Lord. Hezekiah spoke comfortably to all the Levites who had good understanding in the service of the Lord. So they ate throughout the feast for seven days, offering sacrifices of peace offerings and making confession to the Lord, the God of their fathers. The whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days, and they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, did give to the assembly for offerings one thousand bulls and seven thousand sheep. And the princes gave to the assembly a thousand bulls and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. All the assembly of Judah, with the priests and the Levites, and all the assembly who came out of Israel, and the foreigners who came out of the land of Israel and who lived in Judah rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people, and their voice was heard, 
and their prayer came up to his holy habitation, even to heaven. Chapter 31 Now when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah, and broke in pieces the pillars, and hewed down the Asherim, and broke down the high places, and the altars out of all Judah and Benjamin, and Ephraim also and Manasseh, until they had destroyed them all. Then all the children of Israel returned, every man to his possession, into their own cities. Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priest, and the Levites after their divisions, every man according to his service, both the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings and for peace offerings, to minister and to give thanks, and to praise in the gates of the camp of the Lord. He appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings, even for the morning and the evening burnt offerings, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths, and for the new moons, and for the set feast, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Moreover, he commanded the people who lived in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites, that they might give themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel gave in abundance the firstfruits of grain, new wine and oil and honey, and of all the increase of the field, and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. The children of Israel and Judah, who lived in the cities of Judah, they also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep, and the tithe of dedicated things which were consecrated to the Lord their God, and laid them by heaps. In the third month they began to lay the foundation of the heaps, and finished them in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. Azariah the chief priest of the house of Zadok answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have eaten and had enough and hath plenty left, for the Lord has blessed his people, and that which is left is this great store. Then Hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. They brought in the offerings, and the tithes, and the dedicated things faithfully, and over them Conaniah the Levite was ruler, and Shimei his brother was second, Jehiel, and Azaziah, and Nahath, and Asahel, and Jeremoth, and Josabad, and Eliel, and Ismachiah, and Mahath, and Benaiah were overseers under the hand of Conaniah and Shimei his brother, by the appointment of Hezekiah the king, and Azariah the ruler of the house of God. Koray, the son of Imna the Levite, the porter at the east gate, was over the freewill offerings of God, to distribute the offerings of the Lord and the most holy things. Under him were Eden, Maniamim, and Jeshua, and Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah, in the cities of the priest, in their office of trust, to give to their brothers by divisions, to the great as well as to the small, besides those who were reckoned by genealogy of males, from three years old and upward, even every one who entered into the house of the Lord, as the duty of every day required, for their service and their offices according to their divisions and those who were reckoned by genealogy of the priests by their fathers' houses, and the Levites from twenty years old and upward, in their offices by their divisions, and those who were reckoned by genealogy of all their little ones, their wives and their sons, and their daughters, through all the congregation. For in their office of trust they sanctified themselves in holiness. Also for the sons of Aaron the priest, who were in the fields of the suburbs of their cities, in every city, there were men who were mentioned by name, to give portions to all the males among the priests, and to all who were reckoned by genealogy among the Levites. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he worked that which was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God, and every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. Chapter 32 After these things, and this faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came, and entered into Judah, 
and encamped against the fortified cities, and thought to win them for himself. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the springs which were outside of the city, and they helped him. So there was gathered much people together, and they stopped all the springs, and the brook that flowed through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? He took courage, and built up all the wall that was broken down, and raised it up to the towers, and the other wall outside, and strengthened Milo in the city of David, and made weapons and shields in abundance. He set captains of war over the people, and gathered them together to him in the broad place at the gate of the city, and spoke comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid, nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude who is with him. For there is a greater with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. The people rested themselves on the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. After this did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servants to Jerusalem. Now he was before Lachish, and all his power with him, to Hezekiah king of Judah, and to all Judah who were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do you trust that you abide the siege in Jerusalem? Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give you over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria. Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar, and on it shall you burn incense? Don't you know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of the lands? Were the gods of the nations of the lands in any way able to deliver their land out of my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations which my fathers utterly destroyed, that could deliver his people out of my hand, that your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand? Now therefore don't let Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you after this manner, neither believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand, and out of the hand of my fathers. How much less shall your God deliver you out of my hand? His servant spoke yet more against the Lord God, and against his servant Hezekiah. He wrote letters also to rail on the Lord, the God of Israel, and to speak against him, saying, as the gods of the nations of the lands which have not delivered their people out of my hand, so shall the God of Hezekiah not deliver his people out of my hand. They cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall, to frighten them and to trouble them, that they might take the city. They spoke of the God of Jerusalem, as of the gods of the peoples of the earth, which are the work of men's hands. Hezekiah the king and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, prayed because of this and cried to heaven. The Lord sent an angel, who cut off all the mighty men of valor, and the leaders and the captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. When he was come into the house of his God, those who came forth from his own bowels killed him there with the sword. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. Many brought gifts to the Lord to Jerusalem, and precious things to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. In those days Hezekiah was sick even to death, and he prayed to the Lord, and he spoke to him, and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah didn't render again according to the benefit done to him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath on him and on Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord didn't come on them in the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great riches and honor, and he provided himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones, and for spices, and for shields, and for all manner of good vessels. 
storehouses also for the increase of grain, and new wine and oil, and stalls for all manner of animals, and flocks in folds. Moreover he provided himself cities, and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him very much substance. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper spring of the waters of Gihon, and brought them straight down on the west side of the city of David. Hezekiah prospered in all his works. However, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent to him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him, that he might know all that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his good deeds, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the ascent of the tombs of the sons of David, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did honor him at his death. Manasseh his son reigned in his place. Chapter 33 Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty-five years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, after the abominations of the nations whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for the Baals, and made Ashtaroth, and worshipped all the host of the sky, and served them. He built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. He built altars for all the host of the sky in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He also made his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom, and he practiced sorcery, and used enchantments, and practiced sorcery, and dealt with those who had familiar spirits, and with wizards who worked much evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. He set the engraved image of the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from off the land which I have appointed for your fathers, if only they will observe to do all that I have commanded them, even all the law and the statutes and the ordinances given by Moses. Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that they did evil more than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they gave no heed. Therefore the Lord brought on them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh in chains, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. When he was in distress, he begged the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He prayed to him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now after this he built an outer wall to the city of David, on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entrance at the fish gate, and he compassed Ophel about with it, and raised it up to a very great height, and he put valiant captains in all the fortified cities of Judah. He took away the foreign gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mountain of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. He built up the altar of the Lord, and offered thereon sacrifices of peace offerings and of thanksgiving, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people sacrificed still in the high places, but only to the Lord their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, they are written among the acts of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how God was entreated of him, and all his sin, and his trespass, and the places in which he built high places, and set up the ashram, and the engraved images, before he humbled himself. Behold, they are written in the history of Hosei. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house, and Ammon his son reigned in his place. 
Ammon was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. And Ammon sacrificed to all the engraved images which Manasseh his father had made, and served them. He didn't humble himself before the Lord, as Manasseh his father had humbled himself. But this same Ammon trespassed more and more. His servants conspired against him, and put him to death in his own house. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his place. Now we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let each one of us please his neighbor for that which is good, to be building him up. For even Christ didn't please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that through patience and through encouragement of the Scriptures we might have hope. Now the God of patience and of encouragement grant you to be of the same mind one with another, according to Jesus Christ, that with one accord you may with one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another, even as Christ also received you to the glory of God. Now I say that Christ has been made a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, that he might confirm the promises given to the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore I will give praise to you among the Gentiles, and sing to your name. Again, he says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. Again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples praise him. Again, Isaiah says, There will be the root of Jesse, who arises to rule over the Gentiles. On him will the Gentiles hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope in the power of the Holy Spirit. I myself am also persuaded about you, my brothers, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish others. But I write the more boldly to you in part, as reminding you, because of the grace that was given to me by God, that I should be a servant of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be made acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I have therefore my boasting in Christ Jesus in things pertaining to God, for I will not dare speak of any things except those which Christ worked through me for the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed, in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of God's Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and around as far as to Illyricum I have fully preached the gospel of Christ." yes, making it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was already named, that I might not build on another's foundation. But as it is written, they will see, to whom no news of him came. They who haven't heard will understand. Therefore also I was hindered these many times from coming to you. But now, no longer having any place in these regions, and having these many years a longing to come to you, whenever I journey to Spain I will come to you. For I hope to see you on my journey, and to be helped on my way there by you, if first I may enjoy your company for a while. But now, I say, I am going to Jerusalem, serving the saints. For it has been the good pleasure of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are at Jerusalem. Yes, it has been their good pleasure, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, they owe it to them also to serve them in fleshly things. When, therefore, I have accomplished this, and have sealed to them this fruit, I will go on by way of you to Spain. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beg you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from those who are disobedient in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints that I may come to you in joy through the will of God, and together with you find rest. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Psalm 25 by David To you, Yahweh, do I lift up my soul. My God, I have trusted in you. 
Don't let me be put to shame. Don't let my enemies triumph over me. Yes, no one who waits for you shall be put to shame. They shall be put to shame who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, Yahweh. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I wait for you all day long. Yahweh, remember your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from old times. Don't remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. Remember me according to your loving kindness, for your goodness sake, Yahweh. Good and upright is Yahweh, therefore he will instruct sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in justice, he will teach the humble his way. All the paths of Yahweh are loving kindness and truth, to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For your name's sake, Yahweh, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he who fears Yahweh? He shall instruct him in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease. His seed shall inherit the land. The friendship of Yahweh is with those who fear him. He will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever on Yahweh, for he will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring me out of my distresses. Consider my affliction and my travail. Forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many. They hate me with cruel hatred. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, God, out of all of his troubles. Don't love sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes, and you shall be satisfied with bread. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer, but when he has gone his way, then he boasts. There is gold in abundance of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of one who puts up collateral for a stranger, and hold him in pledge for a wayward woman. Fraudulent food is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth is filled with gravel. Plans are established by advice. By wise guidance you wage war.